local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents Bryson's Insurance. Good evening on a Sunday night. I am Terry Andrew. Thank you so much for joining us uh, here on the ABS Evening News on this Sunday. In our first story, murder convict Edwin Gomez and Isaiah Benjamin are still serving their full sentences this evening after failing to convince the Court of Appeal to quash their convictions or lessen their punishments. In 2014, a jury found the appellant and co-accused Jerome Benjamin guilty of murder for Lyndon Isaac's 2010 killing. Only Edwin Gomez and Isaiah Benjamin filed appeals. During the trial, Gomez admitted he fired the gun that killed Isaac uh, as uh, he and his accomplice fled uh, its uh, natural bamboo bar after attempting to rob it in September, of September 24, 2010. Isaiah Benjamin denied involvement, saying he remained in the vehicle and didn't know about the robbery. His lawyer had also made a no-case submission, which the trial judge rejected. The judge sentenced Gomez to 30 years imprisonment with review after 23 years and Benjamin to 25 years with review after 18 years. Both appellants had appealed their convictions and sentences, but Gomez's lawyer withdrew his conviction appeal at the hearing. Well, the court, the appeal court says the man questions uh, were whether the judge erred in rejection in rejecting Isaiah's no-case submission and in leaving the issue of joint enterprise to the jury. It found that the judge correctly applied the no-case submission test and therefore dismissed uh, that ground of appeal. Concerning the joint enterprise point, some of the arguments surrounded the effect of a joggy case which changed the joint enterprise law in 2016, two years after the appellant's case was decided. The Court of Appeal also dismissed this ground while noting it could not fault the trial judge for applying legal principles that existed at the time. DPP, DPP Anthony Armstrong uh, led the Crown's arguments at the appeal hearing while attorneys Wendell Robinson and Sherfield Bowen represented Isaiah Benjamin and Edwin Gomez, respectively. Now, the father of a burnt victim uh, who has been hospitalized for three weeks is appealing for assistance for his son. Shamik Semper says his 24-year-old son urgently needs to be flown out of the country. Although he is awaiting word from the Ministry of Health on assistance, the father tells ABS News his son is in dire need of help. He's there in pain and you know I don't have the money like that to send him to get the medical care. So I'm here waiting on the government to give me the assistance, the money that the the Medicare that he needs, the money that they're charging me, is 620,000 US. And I don't have that money, so if I had, I would have already sent my son to Colombia. That's where they say they want to send him. Semper explains the government has not denied him the help he needs for his son, but the wounds are becoming difficult to, for him to bear. As for now, he is looking at other avenues of raising the funds for further medical treatment for his son who suffered third degree burns. I don't have a plan B as yet because, you know, that type of money is a lot of money. I'm trying to set up a GoFund. You know, they tell me, and the system that I try, they tell me I have to have a UK account, so I would have to look somebody that I know in the UK to set up the account so I can start a GoFund for him. In other news here for us, Fire Chief Assistant Commissioner of Police Elvis Weaver says he is hoping the fire department will get possession of the fire trucks at the port this week. Uh, the two pre-owned fire tenders which the government purchased from the United Kingdom arrived in the country last Monday. They have a combined capacity of 3,000 gallons and are expected to be a major boost to the fire brigade's efficiency. In the meantime, the fire chief says a new fire truck, which is government, also bought from the UK, left England Saturday and is scheduled to arrive in September. Well, the Agricultural Ministry's Permanent Secretary, Colin O'Keefe, says he was pleased to see young vendors participating in last weekend's Payango Fest. He deems the two-day event a success, adding it will be even better next year. Jamie Roche has our story. The Ministry of Agriculture launched the 2022 Payango Fest under the theme Payango Reloaded after the COVID-19 pandemic caused a two-year hiatus. 
we would have um, you know had a quite good turnout on Saturday and a tremendously good turnout overwhelming turnout on Sunday permanent secretary Colin O'Keefe says he was happy to see young vendors participating we had a young gentleman who he used use resin and some other products and produced pens and um, earrings and so on. He, him and his sister, I believe, and they're both quite young. I think he's 11 and his sister is about 13, if my memory serves me right. We also had another 15-year-old who produced peppers and spices and so on. And again, her, the review it was remarkable. The permanent secretary says the vendors also offered many new products at the festival. Like uh, mango powder and, um, and new, new, a new um, type of um, bread food flour and planting flour locally produced and um, we, we got good reviews. In the meantime, Pierce O'Keefe says the event's goat race became one of the main attractions. Of course, I want to use the opportunity to congratulate all who participated in the goat race. I know it could not have been easy to bring all the goats into um, the Cades Bay area. And of course, commend the winners, right? And, and the, the goat that won was, is called Winner. So he had the right name before the, the race even started. He says they're planning a bigger and better Payango Fest for 2023. Jamie J. Boucher, ABS News. Meanwhile, uh, O'Keefe says the Ministry of Agriculture continues to seek out ways to reduce farmers' risk through insurance policies. Caribbean farmers are particularly vulnerable to significant losses from natural disasters since they are highly exposed to hurricanes and other weather hazards. The challenge would be for the farmers to pay because it would be a high rate since it's extremely high risk. So what we're doing, we, we have, this is something that is going on for quite a while. The discussions continue, both locally and regionally, to consider the best approach towards ensuring farmers. He says the Agricultural Ministry has also been receiving support from the Environment Department. We actually had a presentation with some affiliates of this department um, to, as again, in, to consider the, the, the best ways that we can bring the insurance service to the farming community in Antigua and Barbuda. Well, and this also extends to Fisher Folk too. So um, it is a discussion, it is taking place. And we are hoping that sooner than later, you know, we, we would be proud to say that our, the majority of our farming community and fishy folk are actually fully insured. We'll take our first commercial break here on the ABS Evening News.